Welcome back to Squawk Box. The bond markets are overreacting to the Spanish debt crisis. That's according to the vice chairman of one of the country's biggest banks, Santander. Stefan's been following that story for us. And Stefan, the interesting part of all of this is uh, the gentleman might be actually right. Because if you take a look at that five-year note, it's become extremely range-bound and not as volatile as maybe last year. And especially because it's not the only problem uh, on the table for the Spanish banks. You know that they've been uh, through a massive restructuring process. There were 45 local saving banks uh, in Spain a year ago. There are 17 after this big merger that uh, the government put in place uh, last year. There are still some concerns about the, uh, the, the sector, the banking sector, because of the collapse of the real estate bubble in the country. There's not so much concern about the largest bank in Spain, such as BBVA and Santander. Santander today does only 17% of its business out of Spain. It's now a global bank uh, across Europe and also uh, in the world. And for that reason, of course, uh, the bank is not first in line with this debt crisis in Spain. I met, as you mentioned, uh, with the vice chairman of, of the bank for an exclusive interview. And of course, I started to ask uh, him about the risk of contagion of the debt crisis uh, to Spain. We are witnessing uh, a widening of the spreads, obviously, in uh, uh, both in Portugal are, uh, and in Spain. In the case of, of Spain, I am uh, uh, pretty sure this is uh, uh, spread that are not uh, in relation with the real situation of the Spanish debt. If you look at it, uh, the Spanish uh, government debt is 20 percentage uh, uh, points uh, uh, below the average of Europe in regard to GDP. So we are not in a, a situation that uh, uh, is in relation with the very uh, wide spreads that the Spanish debt uh, has. So it is a kind of overreaction of the markets, in my view. The Spanish government this year will issue around 47 billion euros in medium and long-term debt. Uh, do you think it's sustainable given these widening spreads on the market? If you take uh, uh, into consideration uh, uh, the rate of interest that the government is paying for these bonds, and you take it to uh, compare, uh, you compare it with the GDP, we are talking of figures in uh, about two percent of uh, GDP, which is not a, a very high figure. So it's in my way sustainable these rates of interest for uh, for the Spanish uh, debt. Now let's talk about Santander, about your bank. Do you think that the market is too tough? with Santander, uh, even taking into account the recent profit warning? We've been uh, uh, affected by the fact of being uh, an a Spanish bank, though in Spain uh, uh, we get less than 20% of our net income. We get uh, in excess of 20% in Brazil, 17% uh, in the UK, to give you an example of how well diversified we are as a bank. But uh, inevitably, uh, the perception of the markets uh, uh, put us very close to Spain. So our, our share price is being uh, affected by the fact of uh, being in Spain. So uh, we hope that the market will understand that this diversification uh, is a very, uh, uh, a very positive asset for, for Santander. And I'm very optimistic that looking f uh, uh, forward, looking in the future, these elements are going to be uh, uh, considered uh, by the markets. Uh, you have a limited exposure to the Spanish economy. We, we, we got the message. Uh, what's the roadmap this year for Santander? Santander, as I uh, 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 said earlier, uh, is a very well diversified bank. We have an inspore, a very important integration operations now in, in Brazil in the UK with the acquisitions of the, of the branches of the Royal Bank of Scotland, integration in Germany. So we hope that this process of integration will, pro, uh, will create for us synergies and potential growth uh, for the future. So I'm very positive about the future of Santander given this diversified international structure and the effort of consolidation in some markets that will create for us very positive synergies in terms of earnings and in terms of cost reduction. And that was the vice chairman of uh, Santander, the largest bank in Spain. Stay with us because we'll have more of this interview a bit later in the program to talk, of course, about another big issue in Spain. It's the level of the private debt and especially because of the real estate uh, bubble collapse. Uh, what does it mean for the Spanish banking sector? We'll talk about, uh, uh, about this topic uh, with, uh, with the vice chairman of Santander a bit later in the program. With that, Jeff, I send it back to you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it, how um, the market is, is sort of 
focused on this banking story and the government's been making reassuring noises, but what exactly does Zapatero's commitment to accelerate the pace of a resolution of the Caja crisis actually mean? Are we just going to see more of these banks with weak balance sheets squashed together? Officially, there is no more merger on the agenda. That's the view from the government. Uh, Zapatero gave an exclusive interview to uh, CNBC a couple of weeks ago, and he said very clearly that the merger process between the, uh, the local savings banks in Spain didn't slow down at the end of the year, but that was the view from the market that actually the merging process was uh, a bit more difficult than expected. The other point, uh, though, uh, Jeff, if you merge some local banks which have a big exposure to uh, the real estate uh, sector with another bank which has also a big exposure to the real estate sector you just merge the problem but you don't really bring a solution and that's still a concern for the Spanish banking sector we'll see you a little bit later on thank you for that Stefan the CEO of French drug makers and off he tells us why he's pushing ahead with takeover plans for US biotech firm Genzyme we'll be back you're watching Squawk Box Europe